guys and girls, my name is Martin, I'm one of the electronics engineers here at Makeable. Uh, I'm going to give you a bit of a break from John's ugly mug for today and I'm just going to do a short video running over one of our new developments we've been working on recently which is the 5D printer D8 controller. So this is our refresh of the printer board controller that we've been using on our printers up until now. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the printer board, it's generally a reasonably good board, um, it does the job but there are a few little quirks with it um, which have caused us problems during development and now during the general use of the, of the printers. So instead of carrying on shipping with those we decided that we're going to do a respin on the board, uh, try and alleviate some of those issues and then throw in a few new features while we're at it. So we're going to switch to the close-up cam now and run through the board with you. So, um, as you can see, general sort of layout is fairly similar to the printer board. Um, you'll notice that the size has increased slightly. Um, we've increased it by roughly 5mm in length and width. This was to allow us um, to lay things out properly and get everything on the board without having to squash things up and have it in weird orientation. Um, and this also allowed us to uh, put better thermal management on things like the stepper drivers with larger copper pores top and bottom. Um, first features I'll address are two of the biggest flaws with the printer board. Um, the first of which is the fact that with the printer board it was remarkably easy to tear off the USB port. Um, obviously a bit of a problem when that's the main means of communication with the board. So for this redesign, um, we're still using a micro USB connector, but we're now using one that has uh, through hole mechanical retaining tabs. So this gives it much more mechanical strength. So I'm sure if you really tried, you could rip it off the board, but you would have to make a conscious effort. Um, the other um, problem with the printer board that a lot of people uh, were speaking about on the forums is that uh, one of the limit inputs was actually tied to the slave select pin uh, on the micro for the SPI bus um, and that was causing uh, the micro to be set up as a slave when the input was triggered so we've now moved that to a, a different pin um, and the slave select pin is set up as an output <coughs> um, I guess a good place to start with the other features is the input stage. Um, power connector is a four-way Molex Minifit Junior as with the printer board. Um, the input stage here we have added some uh, reverse polarity protection on there. Although this connector is keyed you can still put it in the wrong way um, if you're a bit forceful about it. Um, we've also added some transient voltage suppression on there as well. Uh, moving on to the steppers, uh, generally, as you can see, the layout on these is pretty similar. Um, just tidied the general layout of, layout of them up uh, for like better EMC. Um, and we've increased the size of the copper pores on the top plane, because they were pretty small before, um, to improve the thermal management on these. Um, the biggest change with the steppers is that the micro-stepping inputs are now on all of the stepper drivers are now tied to the microcontroller so you can perform on the fly uh, changing of the micro stepping um, this isn't really beneficial to the makey box itself but if someone wanted to use it for say a laser cutter or some form of CNC machine um, then this might be useful for that um, also you notice that the trimmers that used to be situated in between the stepper drivers is now gone um, this has freed up a bit of space, allowed me to open up the copper pores on the top layer um, and the voltage reference is now set by a digipot which you can see in here. So that just makes it a lot easier to set everything up so you can set the um, voltage reference within the firmware. Um, we have set it up as well so you can set that through the M codes, through the host software. Um, moving on round, you'll see that the uh, heater headers have been beefed up a little bit. Um, this was another problem with the printer board, predominantly for the hotbed. 
Um, the previous connectors they had on the here were the Molex KK series headers, um, which are what are being used for the steppers and the limit inputs, etc. Um, the maximum current that those pins could take was 4 amps, so with our hotbed we have to limit it in software because we were pushing the boundaries with that quite a bit. So we've beefed up, beefed up these connectors here. Um, the theoretical max on these connectors is 9 amps per pin. Um, obviously in this setup we can't do that because we're limited by the input connector and the wiring on the power boards. Um, but I'm just giving you those figures for a comparison. So this is like over double the current rating per pin uh, compared to the printer board. Um, you'll also notice as well that we've got rid of the through-hole TO220 uh, FETs that were previously driving the heaters. Uh, now we're using these uh, surface mount NXP devices here. Um, generally a much more efficient package thermally um, and they're being heat synced directly to the board as well rather than sort of uh, waving around in the air or needing a big uh, screw on heat sink as with the TO220 packages. Um, moving over to the other side of the board, uh, you'll see that we've swapped out the ceramic resonator that was previously being used on the printer board. Uh, we're now using a crystal. Um, the advantage of this is, is much better frequency accuracy than uh, a resonator. Um, and also this, oscillate, this crystal um, operates over a much broader temperature range than the resonator that was previously on here. Um, the resonator that was on here was rated from 20 degree, uh, minus 20 degrees up to plus 85 degrees um, and this board is running quite warm uh, even now but unfortunately with this footprint there's not a lot we can do about that um, so this is still running in sort of around the 50s, 50 degrees centigrade so resonators themselves um, exhibit more drift than crystals um, and then running at those elevated temperatures when the resonator is only rated up to 85 degrees um, the problem is only going to be exacerbated so this crystal is still running at 16 megahertz but this is rated up to 125 degrees centigrade um, moving on around the board we have the SD card um, nothing really special about this um, it's just now a push push SD card rather than the push pull that was on the printer board. Um, in general, it wasn't a problem with the push pull one. It was only really for our use in the Makey Box because of the location of the board up against the panel. Um, we needed to have a really big cutout on there to enable you to get your fingers in properly to pull it out, or you needed to use a pair of pliers. Um, so that's just helped in that regard, just basically a uh, ease of use thing. And you'll also see by here we have added a buzzer onto the board. So just for print status updates, final print or you know, emergency signals, whatever, whatever you want to use it for basically. Um, and that will be uh, integrated into our firmware. And you can also control that using the M codes. Um, another feature we've added is some status LEDs. So there's a status LED down here for the USB port just to show that there is communication between the board and the host machine and also some uh, LEDs down here uh, just to show that the heaters are being driven. Um, other than that it's mainly layout tweaks so few things have been shifted around. Uh, the 5 volt regulator has been moved from over here uh, up to here, closer to the input stage, um, just to keep all the nasty evil switching high current stuff over here, away from all the micro and the, the sensitive bits. Um, and yeah, that's it basically for all the, the main changes made on the board. Um, that isn't an exhaustive list of all the changes but I didn't want you all to fall asleep so we will post a full list of the changes on the site. Um, that will be done over the next few days for you to take a look at. Um, 
as John has already mentioned, we will be offering these boards as a, an upgrade to existing customers. So that will be at a reduced cost. And all of the A6s that are shipping from now on will be shipped with this board. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Um, if you have any questions, then please post them in the comments section. And uh, me or one of my colleagues will get back to you. Thanks for listening. Cheers.